Welcome in, everyone, to Lively Lewis Stories. That's right. We're back with even more awesome adventures with Levi and Ivy. Set your story time meter to fun and get ready to join the Lively Lewis crew. All you need is your imagination and... Off we go! I can't wait to see where our story takes us today. Have you ever wanted to get more Lively Lewis in your life? Well, we've got you covered. Grab an adult and zoom over to LivelyLewisShop.com. Or just click on the link in our show notes. Enough about that. Let's get to today's super Lively Lewis story. The story you're about to enjoy was inspired by Emmeline. Thank you so much for your amazing idea. Mom! Mom! shouted Ivy as she walked quickly toward her mom who was sitting on a park bench by the playground she and Levi were playing on. What is it? she asked. Mom, I lost my unicorn necklace. The brand new one I got at the carnival last week. Ivy said frantically as she looked all around. Don't worry, I'm sure we'll find it, said her mom reassuringly. You know you had it when you got to the park because I remember you showing me how the gems on it sparkled in the sun when we got here. All you have to do is retrace your steps and I'm sure you'll find it in no time. Ivy trusted that her mom's suggestion would work and gave her a big smile. She then grabbed a stick that was laying on the ground next to her and ran off to get Levi to help her. Levi, Levi, shouted Ivy to her brother who was twirling down the spiral slide. Can you please help me find my unicorn necklace? Levi was always there for Ivy and nodded yes as he took one more slide before he ran right over to her. What can I do to help? He asked. And why are you holding a stick? Well, I know I had my unicorn necklace when I got to the park, so mom said I should retrace my steps to find it. Ivy explained. So if you could help me find any of my footprints in the dirt around the playground, we can trace them with the stick, and then I guess I'll find my necklace. Levi tried to hide his giggle because he could see how upset Ivy was about her missing necklace. Once he had his giggle under control, he did his best to explain to her that retracing your steps didn't mean what she thought it was. Ivy, mom didn't mean you have to trace your footprints in the dirt, Levi began. Retracing your steps just means to walk the same route that you took when you got to the park and go to each place in the same order. Oh, that does make a little more sense, Ivy said, giggling along with Levi. So now that we know that, let's find my unicorn necklace. Ivy explained to Levi that after they got to the park, she ran over to the swings first when he ran off to play soccer with some friends. So Levi and Ivy ran over to the swings and looked all around, but no unicorn necklace. Next, Ivy told Levi that she had walked over to the seesaw and went on it with a friend for a few minutes before she had to leave. Levi and Ivy looked around the seesaw as it went up and down, up and down, but no unicorn necklace. Then Ivy told Levi the last place she went, before she noticed her necklace was gone, was the rock climbing wall. They ran over to the wall and Levi climbed up one side as Ivy climbed up the other. No unicorn necklace at the top of the rock wall, called out Levi. Ivy said the same thing, but she didn't hurry down like Levi. Instead, she decided to look around the whole playground from high atop the wall, and that's when she saw it. The same sparkle that she had shown her mom when she first got to the park. Levi! Levi! exclaimed Ivy from the top of the rock wall. It's right there! I see my unicorn necklace! As Ivy pointed to the ground beneath her feet, Levi ran around to the other side of the rock wall and picked up Ivy's sparkling unicorn necklace. She carefully raced down the rock wall and grabbed the necklace from his hands. She could have not been happier. We found it! We found my unicorn! shouted Ivy as she jumped up and down with Levi. Levi and Ivy were just around to brum back to tell their mom the good news when they heard something rustling in the trees and bushes that surrounded the playground. What was that? asked Levi as he turned around for a closer look. With Ivy close behind, they soon found out what was making the noise, and it was nothing that they could have ever imagined. Ivy, are you seeing what I'm seeing? Asked Levi, sounding surprised and very excited at the same time. I sure am, said Ivy with the same level of excitement. There standing in front of two very excited children was the sweetest and kindest looking little gnome. She wore a flower dress and although she was smiling, her eyes looked like she had a question to ask. Hi there, I hope I didn't startle you, said the little gnome. My name is Emmeline, and I live here in the woods with my family. It's very nice to meet you, Emmeline, said Ivy. I'm so surprised that we've never seen you before. We go for walks in these woods all the time with our parents. My name is Ivy, and this is my brother Levi. 
It's very nice to meet you both, replied Emmeline. The gnomes and other creatures that live in these woods, like fairies, unicorns, and trolls, usually stay out of view from humans. But I really need some help today, and I think you two are just the right ones for the job. Levi and Ivy were happy to help the little gnome, but couldn't imagine why they would be the helpers. So they sat and listened closely to Emmeline as she explained her story. I was helping out a new family of unicorns that just moved into the woods by watching their littlest unicorn, Posy, while they were moving things into their new house, Emmeline began. We were having a great time. Then all of a sudden, I got focused on some shiny rocks in the stream just down the path, and when I looked up, Posy was gone. Oh no, we're so sorry to hear that, Emmeline, said Ivy. I ran and told Posy's parents, and while I was trying to figure out what to do, I heard you shouting that you found a unicorn, said Emmeline. Thinking it was Posy, I ran over to see, and even though it wasn't her, I thought if you'd found one unicorn today, maybe you could find another. Levi and Ivy immediately told Emmeline they could help and ran off to tell their mom that they were taking a little walk in the woods to help a friend find something they'd lost. Just stay on the path that we usually walk on and don't go further than the stream, she said as Levi and Ivy agreed and ran back to Emmeline. Let's go find Posy, <laughs> said Ivy with a big smile. As the three detectives ran off into the woods, Emmeline told Levi and Ivy that Posy was small with a long white sparkling mane and shiny silver hooves. She was a very confident and courageous little unicorn who loved her new home and exploring. And lucky for all of them, her parents had always told Posy if she ever got lost to just stay where she was and, if possible, ask for help from a responsible grown-up. Levi and Ivy walked through the woods with Emmeline calling Posy's name and looking here and there for any sign of the little unicorn. After about 10 minutes of searching, Ivy had an idea. How about instead of just walking all over the woods, we retrace your steps with Posy from this morning, suggested Ivy as she looked at Emmeline. I don't think it's a good time to stop and draw right now, Ivy. But maybe after we find Posy, replied Emmeline, sounding a bit confused by the suggestion. Levi then explained what retracing your steps meant, and Emmeline nodded her head. That sounds like a great idea, she answered. The first place we went was the Pine Tree Grove. So off the three detectives ran into the grove, but there was no unicorn. Where did you go after the grove? asked Levi. I showed Posy the waterfall, answered Emmeline. So off they ran to the waterfall, but there was no unicorn there either. Where did you go next? asked Ivy. Next, we went to the stream, and that's where I lost Posy, answered Emmeline, looking so sad. Don't give up hope, said Levi. We're definitely going to find her. So off they ran to the stream, but once again, there was no unicorn there. Emmeline flopped down on a patch of moss with her head in her hands. I can't believe I lost Posy, said Emmeline. When we find her, I bet she won't want to be my friend anymore. No more playing in the waterfall, no more hide-and-seek in the pine grove, no more eating tasty berries at the berry patch. Berry patch? asked Ivy, interrupting Emmeline. You never mentioned you went to a berry patch. That's right, said Emmeline excitedly as she remembered one other place she took Posy that morning. It was the first thing we did. How could I forget that? We walked over to the berry patch to get a morning snack. Posy loved the berries so much she kept saying, num, num, num. As she gobbled them up. I have a good feeling about this, said Levi. Show us the berry patch, Emmeline. As the three detectives ran through the woods, they could hear a faint noise growing louder as they got closer and closer to the berry patch. Nom, nom, nom. Posy! shouted Emmeline as she ran over to the little unicorn. We found you! We found our unicorn! Levi and Ivy were so excited to finally meet Posy, and even more excited that she was safe and Emmeline was so happy. Emmeline ran to get Posy's parents while Ivy and Levi stayed with Posy feasting on tasty sweet berries. It was a nice reward for all their good detective work that day. Thank you so much for all your help, said Emmeline, giving Levi and Ivy a hug as they stood back where they first met at the edge of the woods by the playground. I knew we'd find Posy together. We were so happy to help, replied Ivy. Now run back and have some more fun today with Posy, giggled Levi. Just don't take your eyes off that little unicorn again. I won't, answered Emmeline with a big smile. And next time you're walking through the woods with your parents, make a stop at the berry patch. Maybe I'll be there with Posy. 
That would be great, said Levi. We definitely will, added Ivy. Bye, Emmelyn. Levi and Ivy waved goodbye to the little gnome as she disappeared through the tall grass back into the woods. That was one amazing adventure, said Levi. Great detective work today, Ivy. You too, Levi, replied Ivy as she waved to her mom and they started to walk back to the playground. Then all of a sudden they heard a big commotion by the sandbox. Oh no, I can't find my new truck. They heard a little voice shout. What do you think, Levi? Ivy asked with a smile. Do we have room in our detective schedule to help out one more kid today? Absolutely, said Levi with a giggle. It's time to retrace a few more steps. Thanks for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the story and learned a little something too. And since we know everyone has their own story, we'd love to hear yours. If you have an idea for a Lively Lewis story, leave a comment on our Apple Podcast review page with five stars, your idea, and your little one's name. Then maybe our next adventure will be with you. Until our next story time hangout. Thanks for listening. We can't wait to share another fun Lively Lewis story with you.